Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining us for the API's Ion Government program. This presentation brings you an in-depth look at the plans, programs, and policies of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm Hala John. On this evening's program, Prime Minister Gonzales pays a special visit to Central Leeward Youth. The NQD holds an important TVET symposium. Then the MCA provides critical training to stakeholders within the medicinal cannabis industry. And in our final segment, the CID teaches Vincentians how to be safe for the Christmas season. Stay with us, this informative package is ahead, but first let's join Sheridan Lewis for Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to the Newswatch segment. I'm Sheridan Lewis. Members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force gathered at the Old Montrose Police Station Lecture Hall on Monday, the 2nd of December 2019, to address various pertinent matters. Commissioner of Police Colin John, in his remarks, tackled issues that have affected the integrity of the organization. Commissioner John spoke directly to the issue of three police officers who were recently arrested and charged for various criminal offenses. The commissioner definitively stated that under no circumstances will the organization condone any unlawful acts being perpetrated by a member of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. He added that police officers have taken oath and are vested with the responsibility to protect the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all the visitors of this country. The top cop stated, like every other suspect, the officers must go through the legal system and are deemed innocent until proven guilty by a court of law, emphasizing that the law should be allowed to take its course. The Commissioner further stated that the integrity of the organization will not be compromised for anyone. He reminded the audience about the consequences of being caught up in corrupt practices merely for monetary gains. Meanwhile, Deputy Commissioner of Police Frankie Joseph also addressed the gathering. He stated that all police officers are placed in a position with great responsibility and reminded the officers that they are servants of the people. He stressed that the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force has over the years placed tremendous emphasis on initiatives that aided in building trust between the police force and the general public. He reiterated that it only takes one second for that trust to disappear, since in any relationship, the easiest thing to vanish is trust, and it will take many years to rebuild. The Deputy Commissioner commended the efforts embarked upon to form the Police Youth Clubs, PYC, throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He also congratulated PYC's football, netball and basketball teams and management for winning the 2019 SVG Community Colleges Invitational Tournaments. In an effort to educate and develop stakeholders within the medicinal cannabis industry here, the Medicinal Cannabis Authority, MCA, recently launched a series of workshops for approximately 100 participants, specifically physicians and pharmacists. Successful participants will have the authority to prescribe and dispense medicinal cannabis to patients. On Wednesday, the 4th of December 2019, over 20 medical professionals gathered at the NIS conference room to further enhance their knowledge of the medicinal cannabis industry. Medicinal Cannabis Authority Chief Executive Officer Dr. Gerald Thompson pointed out that medical practitioners' responsibility to their clients is of utmost importance. We realize that as health practitioners, you are the individuals who really have to make some important decisions for your patients, for your clients. Where still a number of patients in Canada still look to the black market for their product rather than going to a physician. Whereas on the other hand, in New York, they went out and did 
an intensive program of physician training, pharmacist training, and they found that there was a significant reduction in not just a cannabis from a, um, a, a, an illegal use, but the number of physicians understanding the appropriate process and the appropriate methods and uses of cannabis for medicinal purposes. The final training session will be held on Sunday. Here's where we end this segment of Newswatch. I'm Sheridan Lewis. Stay with us. The program continues in just a moment. You've got the nation's future in your hands With early childhood education administrators and supervisors we lifting the standards throughout this land Ensuring high quality of service you provide we lifting the ballot, high standards be your guide Let us strive, let's get it right The nation's future is in your hands to learn more about the new Early Childhood Education Standards, please contact the Early Childhood Desk Curriculum Development Unit, Ministry of Education, at telephone number 4571466 or 4561111, extension 450. A message from the Ministry of Education and the UNICEF. Welcome back. The accomplishment of the Central Leeward Secondary School, which did the double, to secure both junior and secondary titles in the just concluded inter-secondary schools football tournament, was celebrated and given pride of place this morning with a visit from Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Ralph Gonzales, who was present to watch the games last Sunday at the Victoria Park. More in this report. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzales paid homage to the victors for the senior and junior division of the recently concluded Interschools football tournament. The Warriors of the Central Leeward Secondary School gave a stunning show at the finals on Sunday, December 1st at the Victoria Park. During the Prime Minister's visit, the proud principal, Kenneth Holder, issued an interesting challenge to the head of state. Education revolution has resulted in us being champions today in football, both senior and junior. We know that we have work to do, and I put forward a challenge to you, even as I welcome you and reflect on education revolution, that let us, in light of our celebration in football, let us see how much we could have multiple access with a greater emphasis on sports, and I challenge us to move fast and straight ahead towards creating a school of sporting excellence in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And no doubt, St. Vin um, Central Leeward will feature prominently in that school. Thank you very much for coming, and I do hope you take on board our challenge to widen the scope so that as we talk about sports against crime, our students would indeed benefit more, and their talent would come forward more to the fore. So, my challenge is that we have a school that celebrates excellence in sport. Physical education teacher and coach Chester Morgan thanked those who came out in support of the teams. The guys really were chained hard. It was not my only input, but it came from the local clubs around the communities, especially Adori and Blossom FC. And Leu, they work a lot with some of these players. We are just having the fine tune for them. Um, we already we had bone in our throat for Georgetown since last year. We beat us one year in the semi-finals, and we decided that we we'll wait until it's most important. To do that. <laughs> and also, we wanted the PM to visit the game. He came to back Georgetown, but at the end of the day, he had to back Central Evans. <laughs> so thank you for your visit. And as Mr. Holder said, we'd like for you now to continue to push us in sports as we are one of the pilot in school when it comes to sporting activities. So Sally from Georgetown, so you won't celebrate that much. But we have a space for you still. Right? 
will still give him a little space. So again, thanks for coming. And we couldn't have done it without the wonderful staff members. They were more eager than I. At times, the chair waiting too. So, and the boys will say, and we have the boys will say thanks to everyone who supported us because the plan was to block Victor Park and we did come in our blue. And we did show you that essentially what secondary school where barely warriors, we are the best. Right? We are more than just a school. We are way beyond that. Thank you. Prime Minister Gonzalez, who admitted that his preference lied with the Georgetown Gladiators, also congratulated the outstanding performance from the rural school. When I got into Victoria Park, the primary school, the two primary school finalists were playing. And I went into the main stand because a number of women were there and some children, and I was summoned. And when would Vincentian women summon you? You have to go. <laughs> so I went. I reasonably suspected that I was walking into an ant's nest from Barley. <laughs> so I went there, I talked to the children, you know, hugged them up, kissed, take pictures. And waited for the inevitable question. Who you come to support? <laughs> I said, I have come to support the gladiators from Georgetown. And in unison, the woman said, na 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 The warriors, the warriors. And they proceeded, they proceeded metaphorically the Nyam Mira. <laughs> so I left there, I left the stand and came down with the warriors ringing in my ears and I met some students from your school. In fact, I said, where are you from? I said, Barley. They posed the question. So I said, there is absolutely no way that the gladiators are losing today. And they heckled me. They said, you are going to be defeated today. I said, never. <laughs> they said, when it happens, what would you do? I said, well, if the impossible happens, I will have to come to Central Leeward Secondary School and pay homage. But in the morning, when I called in on Pijan's program, Pijan had posed the same query to me. And I also had boasted and told him, there's no way. But I watched the game and you all did very, very well. And I want to congratulate you. I also want to congratulate the juniors who had an easier run. They had a much easier run. But I want to tell you this. It is absolutely incredible that in 2019, that these two secondary schools that are playing for the finals, is one school from the Northeast and one from the Northwest from the countryside. When I was your age, you didn't have football teams in the countryside. They was located largely, almost exclusively around Kingston. And the grammar school which then went to the sixth form. There was not an A-level college then, there wasn't community college. The grammar school team played in the premier division for football. 
and it was inconceivable that the other two male schools with, with boys, Intermediate and Emmanuel, that they could be to grammar school. To begin with, there would have been boys only up to fifth form, whereas the grammar school carried boys up to sixth form, so they were bigger and stronger. Now, what we have on the national team, you see, a lot of persons from the countryside, Winward and Leeward, dominating. While, of course, you still have many persons around the city. In the, when I was growing up, the big team in the city was, was, was Notre Dame's. And the idea of a country team beating Notre Dame was, was completely out of the question. So the journey that we have traveled has been an amazing one. And I want to congratulate, congratulate you and I want to congratulate Georgetown. The Prime Minister also used the opportunity to encourage the students in their academic pursuits. Now, every single child, every single person who is 12 years old has an opportunity to attend secondary school. And I want to say to you that if, as you're going through your school, that you don't make the grade with all the subjects, don't give up. You can do classes, you can get them. You get your subjects, you go into the community college. Don't let anybody tell you, don't let your mother or your father tell you that you don't, there's no money to go. Not so long as I'm Prime Minister, there'll be money available for you to go to community college. There'll be support. And you get your associate degree or you get your CAPE subjects, you can go to university. And money is also available. Support is also available for you to go to university. You have you have a gift, you have a resource, far richer than what I have. I have experience, but you know what you have? Youth. All things being equal, everybody else in this room will hear the announcement of my funeral. That doesn't make me sad. What I want to know is that when you hear the announcement of my funeral, you're on a journey going somewhere, getting, some, getting on somewhere with your life in a productive way, in whatever field that you choose to do it. In the book of Micah, the question is posed, what does the Lord require of us? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. None of us is perfect. But all, each one of us has possibilities and strengths and limitations and weaknesses. And what we have to try to do is to fortify our strengths and to see if we can turn our, our weaknesses into possibilities and to make the best and most of our possibilities. New primary school football champions were also crowned on Sunday, the Kingstown Prep School. For the API, I'm Hala John. Welcome to Opportunity Calls, where we inform you on vacancies within the government service, opportunities for training, scholarships, and much more. Stay tuned as an opportunity might just be calling you. Applications are invited for suitably qualified persons who wish to be considered for internship under the Support for Education and Training SET program commencing January 2020. 
Each applicant must meet the following requirements. Be a holder of at least a bachelor's degree from a recognized and accredited university. Be a graduate of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College who has been awarded an associate's degree or has obtained a minimum of two double unit CAPE and or GCE advanced level subjects as well as communication studies. Graduates of the Division of Nursing Education must have successfully completed the Regional Nursing Examinations and must be registered and licensed to practice in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All academic qualifications must be certified by the National Accreditation Unit, Ministry of Education. Have limited work experience. Be between the ages of 18 to 35. Successful applicants will be engaged until December 31, 2020 on a contractual basis. Application forms are available at the following locations. Office of the Prime Minister, 4th Floor, Administrative Center, Kingstown. Service Commissions Department, 2nd Floor, Ministerial Building, Kingstown. Or online at www.pmoffice.gov.vc and www.pscgov.vc. Completed applications should be submitted to the Cabinet Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister, 4th Floor, Administrative Centre, Kingstown, the Chief Personnel Officer, Service Commissions, Department, 2nd Floor, Ministerial Building, Kingstown, and should be submitted with the following Certified copy of a birth certificate, recent police record, copies of academic qualifications certified by the National Accreditation Union Ministry of Education, two recent testimonials, a CV, and a recent passport size photograph. The deadline for submission of applications is the 31st of December 2019. Tourism has many benefits to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It creates growth and a boost in economic activities, infrastructure development, job creation, entrepreneurship, and is a source of foreign exchange earnings. Supermarkets and vendors, bars, restaurants, taxis, tour guides, hotels, service providers, and many more all benefit directly from income gained through the tourism industry. Taxes collected from visitors to our country help St. Vincent's economy and its growth. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace it. Tourism is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. You're viewing a presentation by the Agency for Public Information. The National Qualifications Department hosted a symposium to discuss important issues relating to the technical and vocational education and training programs available in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The symposium was part of activities to recognize TVET Month and held under the theme TVET Engaging Employers and Other Stakeholders to Improve Employability of Youths and Adults for Sustainability in the Vincentian Economy and Beyond. Here's a look at that important exercise. The National Qualifications Department in the Ministry of Education brought together stakeholders in technical and vocational education and training for National Symposium on Wednesday, November 27, 2019. The symposium was held at the Methodist Church Hall. And so God, as we gather today and as we work collectively for the advancement of our young people and our nation, we we pray that we will work with a deep sense of the sovereignty of God, the, the, the God who is King and Lord over us all, and, and a deep regard for the gifts and abilities and possibilities that you give. The theme of the National TVET Symposium was technical and vocational education and training, engaging employers and other stakeholders to improve employability of youths and adults for sustainability in the Vincentian economy and beyond. Welcome again to the National TVET Symposium. The purpose of this symposium today is to bring together all who are involved in the industry of technical vocation and training. It, we are represented here by the education interests, business interests, employment interests, and the idea is to come together here for an entire day where we can discuss ideas, hear the latest that is taking place within the, the sector, subsector, and to plan a way forward for technical vocational and education training in St. Vincent and the Grenadines.
In his welcome remarks, Director of the National Qualifications Department, Mr. Kenroy Kittles, thanked all who attended the symposium. Kittles acknowledged the Caribbean Development Bank for partnering with the government to further TVET instruction in the country. Now, I must emphasize our mission for technical, technical and vocational education, and it says to provide opportunities for appropriate training and certification in a range of occupational areas to all persons desirous of such, thereby meeting St. Vincent and the Grenadines' need for an efficient and productive workforce equal to their challenges of, and opportunities of a changing regional and international environment. And so the vision is really that technical and, education, technical and vocational education and training, we need that system that will integrate into the national education and training provision, adequate resources, and recognize for its contribution to productivity, personal and national development. Mr. Richard Hansen, team leader, Skills for Youth Employment in the Caribbean Sky Program, gave information about the program, an initiative from the UK government. The Skills for Youth Employment Program is very much pleased to support this initiative of the Sector Skills Development Agency to consider workforce development in SVG, and most importantly, to consider how skilled and qualified labour can positively impact household income and economic growth at the micro level, at the macro level. Skills training qualification is of benefit to everybody. The British government, through UK aid, through the Sky programme, will fund approximately 1,500 training places in St. Vincent between July 2019 and June 2022. Of these, Sky is pleased to support nearly 1,000 places in the four government training institutes and with the Department of Adult and Continuing Education. This will actually be most, if not all, TVET in the public sector from 2020 onwards to 2022. Sky is also very pleased to support the SSDA and training providers across St Vincent and the Grenadines to improve their offer in terms of the quantity and the quality of training provision in SVG. Minister with the Responsibility for Education, Honourable St. Clair Prince, acknowledged persons who gave human service to TVET in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and expressed gratitude to several partners with the Ministry of Education in this regard. There was once a time when TVET was a bad word, or a dirty word as you may want to say, However, I noticed that over the past few years, TVET is becoming mainstream and it is no longer a taboo. It is no longer an area where people go when nobody else wants them. The experts tell us that education is not only a human right, but also a driver of economic growth, poverty reduction, and indeed sustainable development. This government subscribes fully to this view and that is why we have been investing so much in education in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have been making strides in all areas, early childhood, primary education, secondary education, universal secondary education, post-secondary, tertiary, special education. I think it's only fitting to ask if Dolphus ever came back. <laughs> what we could probably do is provide Dolphus with some TV training, of course, and he, 
wherever he is, he can make some money and send it back to St. Vincent, right? <laughs> All right, that was the Bethel High School. Another round of applause. We have an obligation to make our, our students feel appreciated. We have improved the technical institutes at Barley, Camden Park, Kingstown, Georgetown. And we are in the design stages for an institute in Mariaqua. At the secondary school's level, nearly 20% of students are directly exposed to TVET. And at the moment, we are thinking, we are discussing whether or not we should reopen the TVET Center at Petty Bodell Secondary School so that that North Leeward area would be well served. Work is ongoing at JP Eustace and Beckway Community High to better deliver TVET. At the community college, the Department of Technical and Vocational Education is bursting at the seams because of the popularity of TVET. In addition to that, Mr. Boeings is constrained because he now has to have a summer program which benefits a number of out-of-school youths, vulnerable youths, marginalized youths. And I think this year he graduated 92 of them to get some skills so that they can improve their life skill, their life um, in, 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 in the society. Delivering the feature address, Minister of Finance, Honorable Camilo Gonzalez, added that TVET is crucial to enhancing the lives of Vincentians. And we have to involve the local community just as much as we involve the business community. Because the local community can be an employer because every local community has local needs. And entrepreneurial youth, um, through the eyes of an entrepreneurial youth, a community is just full of opportunity, things that they can do and provide if the needs of that community are aligned with the training available. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines is going to implement a small grants program to young people with vocational skills who want to get involved as entrepreneurs uh, or as small business people in various sectors of community life. Little startup cash, talking about the entrepreneurial ones, not the ones who are going to work for somebody. Um, a little startup cash and a place, place to do your business. And so we're going to have a pilot program this year where we're going to create some small wooden uh, community service centers, essentially, in areas where the state has some land. The symposium looked at several thematic sessions, such as enhancing the role of TVET for sustainable development, impact of education and training on workforce development, building synergies between TVET and the private sector, and the current status of TVET in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, successes and challenges. Reporting for the Agency for Public Information, I am Keisha Woodley. Stay with us, more Iron Government up next. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, lush mountains and valleys, rivers, hidden waterfalls, and multiple islands and islets, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are a friendly people, welcoming tourists from all over the world with exotic boutique and luxury hotels and a hospitable business environment. Let's make all tourists welcome at our international airport, on cruises, on yachts, on sailboats, on land and sea tours, at beach lines, at our restaurant shops and bars, and at our national festivals. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace Tourism it. Tourism is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. Thanks for staying with us. Local physicians and pharmacists received training in the proper dispensation of medicinal cannabis during a workshop organized by the Medicinal Cannabis Authority held on Wednesday, December 4th. This initiative is part of efforts to develop ancillary participants within the medicinal cannabis industry of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The API's Ginny St. Philip tells us more in this report. 
approximately 100 participants, specifically physicians and pharmacists, will benefit from a series of workshops spearheaded by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Medicinal Cannabis Authority, MCA. Once participants are successful after the training, they will have the authority to prescribe and dispense medicinal cannabis to patients. One of the training sessions took place on Wednesday, 4th December 2019 at the NIS conference room. Medicinal Cannabis Authority biotechnologist Dr. Jean Seville Cummins expressed that prescribing and dispensing medicinal cannabis correctly is of importance to health professionals. Dr. Cummins spoke of the end goal and hoped that participants would start to feel more familiar and educated on medicinal cannabis. This is our second seminar. We had one last week for other members of the medical community here in St. Vincent and we have a third one coming up this Sunday um, for those of for the individuals who were not able to make it out last week or this week. Um, we've designed the entire thing to be very interactive and so I would encourage you at all times throughout the course of the day if you have questions to ask. Um, our intention here is to try to transfer as much knowledge as possible to you guys who will be on the ground in terms of helping individuals in St. Vincent be able to access medicinal cannabis in the near future. I'm happy to see so many familiar faces. I know a lot of you probably don't know me, but I do know a few of you. Um, it really shows for us uh, uh, an indication that there's good interest within the medical community in terms of being able to dispense medicinal, prescribe and dispense medicinal cannabis here on the ground. And um, our hope is that at the end of the day, today you will feel comfortable, at least a little bit more comfortable than you are right now with regards to the prescription and dispensing of these products. This is of course just the first round of training. Our intention is to continue this training as we go. We'll have several bits of information that are available. Um, there's some of it in your packets here today and mo much more of it will come as, as time goes. Uh, but our hope is that you will eventually end up being very comfortable prescribing medicinal cannabis, um, hoping again that uh, our end goal is reached, which is the proper safe delivery of medicinal cannabis to patients in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Medicinal Cannabis Authority Chief Executive Officer Dr. Gerald Thompson spoke about the meticulous journey on the current stage of medicinal cannabis industry awareness. You know, this, is, this has been a bit of a journey. It's been a bit of a journey. We've had at least over 23 town hall meetings. We've had 16 full-fledged radio programs, some involving two, three stations. Um, they, 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 we've had a lot of tours, international tours, seeing what's happening in other parts of the world. And um, television, um, numerous media posts. And in the development of this whole thing, we've had I would say close, uh, one, probably the, the, the longest um, or the largest number of select committee meetings in taking a very detailed and deliberate approach, a consultative approach in arriving at this juncture. So we are at an important juncture. Dr. Thompson proceeded to play a video of the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonsalves speaking at the United Nations on the topic of medicinal cannabis. This industry seeks to marry the latest scientific and pharmaceutical knowledge on cannabis with the long-standing expertise of our traditional cultivators of the plant. In defining the parameters of our medical cannabis sector, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has taken great efforts to scrupulously comply with international law while taking into account the specific needs and characteristics of our country, culture, and people. Undoubtedly, the rapidly shifting medical and legal landscape will eventually require the international community to revisit the long-standing treaties governing the use and trade in cannabis. In the interim, it is crucial that the enforcers and interpreters of these international agreements refrain from a kind of hardline orthodoxy that disproportionately affects small states 
why I formulated the disputable disregard of the law by mobile phone The Chief Executive Officer mentioned the protocols and rules as it relates to trade and medicinal cannabis. We are governed by an international treaty on cannabis and other narcotic drugs. And this has led to a certain protocol, certain rules, international rules in relation to trade, that if you buck the system, there are consequences. And in establishing an industry, there are certain things that have to be done. Firstly, we must establish an agency, an authority, the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. Anybody cultivating must be licensed. That the only thing you could trade in is medicinal cannabis or research. In other words, recreational cannabis is prohibited. And why? In the treaty and other um, subsidiary documents, they have established a schedule, a schedule to judge narcotics, rank narcotic drugs. And there's one of those schedules, schedule one, which is deemed as drugs that have no redeeming medical properties whatsoever that are highly addictive. In other words, they can't be used for anything and they have cannabis inside of that. Dr. Thompson highlighted the medical practitioners' responsibilities to their clients and stressed how crucial it is to have a sound knowledge base on the subject matter. We realize that as health practitioners, you are the individuals who really have to make some important decisions for your patients, for your clients. We recently went on a tour of um, Canada and the United States. Um, we'd met with different entities at, at, at various levels. And it was observed that in Canada, and you know, this doesn't reflect on Dr. Bear, that um, the, the, the level and the amount of outreach to physicians and the training in the use of cannabis had not gone a long way. And the number of physicians who write for cannabis in Canada is much lower than expected because a number of them would not have gone through that particular training. A number of patients in Canada still look to the black market for their product rather than going to a physician. Whereas on the other hand, in New York, they went out and did an intensive program of physician training, pharmacist training, and they found that there was a significant reduction in not just a cannabis from a, um, a, a, an illegal use, but the number of physicians understanding the appropriate process and the appropriate methods and uses of cannabis for medicinal purposes. And that's what we are looking to try and achieve here in St. Louis and Grenadines. We are not, we are not waving a flag, you know, or, or, or waving a rag and tell you please prescribe cannabis. We are trying to um, pr provide a process by which you have a much better understanding in relation to its use. What are the illnesses that we recommend that it's used for or it can be used for legally? And you are the individuals who will make those particular choices as regards what you do for your patients. The first training session commenced on Wednesday, 27th November, and is expected to end on Sunday, 8th December, 2019. Upon completion of the MCA Certificate of Training for Physicians and Pharmacists, all successful participants will receive certificates. This is Janice St. Philip reporting for the EPI. Of
Coast Marine and Coastal Rehabilitation Adaptation Project. Located south of the island, extending to over five bays, White Sands, Kanash, Kaliakwa, Villa, and Indian Bay. Let's improve aquatic life. A message from the National Parks, Rivers, and Beaches Authority and Partners. Welcome back to the API's Eye on Government. The Criminal Investigation Department, CID, of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force is urging Vincentians to be safe during the Christmas season. In the following interview, the API's Tamara Barrow spoke with two CID officers about upcoming events organized by the department to promote crime prevention. Thank you for welcoming us here at API. I'm Corporal C. N. Shoy of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force attach the information technology department in the CID. I am Constable 996 Lavia and I am attached to the Criminal Investigations Department. Just to brief you on who we are, we are executive members of the Crime Prevention Unit. Now, the Crime Prevention Unit is a branch within the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, more so the Criminal Investigations Department. Every year, we host two crime prevention exhibitions, one in the carnival season and one in the Christmas season, because we believe these are the two busiest and most important time of the year. Hence, the couple and I are here to speak about tips or give methods in which we as Vincentians or visitors can prevent crimes. Could you tell us a little bit more about the, that um, activity you had in, in the carnival season and now segue into the activity for Christmas? Is it the same, is it the same format or you do two different things for this <coughs> exhibition? No. It's similar format. The concept is the same, similar stakeholders on board, and we're just modifying for the Christmas edition because, as my colleague Lavi said, this is the time that a lot of criminal activities do occur, and we have to put measures in place and strategies. And this is one of the wet methods that we are using during the Christmas season or crime prevention exhibition to showcase the tips and information to the public. And this year, we're going on the team securing citizens and visitors to innovative policing because we realize that we have to do things differently and we have to modify and do a whole holistic approach and involve citizens, visitors to, to help us. We alone cannot solve crime so we have to do a lot to assist in this solve. What has been the impact of these exhibitions so far? You said this is an annual event. Yes. So could you tell me um, some of the advantages that you have seen over the years of having this exhibition, especially when it comes to crime prevention? Of course, I could start with homeowners for argument. We see a lot of reduce in the burglaries because of the tips that we put out there. For example, we advise for so when they're not at home, make sure they secure the premises, lock their windows, the doors. When you're leaving home for extended period of time, make sure you inform a neighbor. Leave your lights on at night when you're away. These sort of things are help in, in reducing the crime. And we reflect that on the previous statistics to this year so far. We should reduce in our criminal activities as relates to the stats of this initiative. One of the things I believe that people enjoy most when they come to the exhibition, they get to, they are informed of the counterfeit notes as opposed to the real notes. So they can get to see, because we have an expert, which is Assistant Superintendent of Police, Hazon Ballantyne. And he usually is there to inform the public of what to expect, what are the, um, the security features of our real money as opposed to the And I can add to that, um, you, you know the new notes that are out, the polymer notes. The polymer notes. And he now came back for an extended week of training. So on that day, we look forward for inf inf inviting and informing the public of this new security features, what to look forward to on the polymer notes. So it will be an exciting day. And I will say, for the first time, we will have the national mobilization going to be collaborating with us on that day to, to showcase their brochures and speak about domestic violence, child abuse, sexual offenses, along with our in-house partners, meaning like the sexual offenses unit, the narcotics, the fire brigade, traffic. our traffic department, on our own, CIE will be there giving you tips, brochures, and speaking to the public on that day. So it's a pack activities from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on that day. 
I, I see a lot of collaboration and I'm looking forward with earnest to this um, crime prevention exhibition. What would you say are some of the most prevalent criminal activities around the Christmas season and what are we to look out for? Okay, well obviously theft, burglaries and minor to morbid. Those are the common offenses that we deal with on a daily basis as it relates to that. And as you speak on theft, we advise persons the do and don'ts in how to, female especially, you'll be see those displaying how to hold your purse, your handbags, and we'll have demonstration, we have flyers, we'll have blackboards, how to carry your wallets, your phone as a female, how to carry it, not in your back pocket. Same with the male, not to put your wallet in your back pocket, keep it in the front. So a lot of pictures, photographs, the do's and don'ts of those things. We advise persons as you relate to motor vehicle owners not to leave valuables display that the person can pass and see what is in their vehicle. So those are preventative methods that person will not break into a vehicle. And I will speak, when you carry a cash or you want to go to an ATM, be discreet when you withdraw your money, stay inside, count it, do not come in the public that person can see that you have a large amount of cash. And make sure you take what you want, not sufficient just to do what you have to do. That's why I put that. And I ever speak on the credit card as it relates to information IT tips. I'm speaking about the cybercrime. There's a lot of criminal activities happening in the internet. Person this time of the year they realize they purchase. They go on the Amazon, any sites use the cars to withdraw to buy. We always advise person to read a privacy policy. Make sure that the site is legit, legitimate and when you purchase because we see a lot of persons come with fraudulence and got maybe in compromise as it relates to that. So we advise persons to read the security features as in the privacy policy and make sure that your device is up to date. Make sure you have an antivirus, make sure it's very up to date. And um, I have to say, I realize persons these days when they lost a cellular phone, they came to the IT department like where myself is working and say that officer, I lost my cell phone. I advise them there is apps that are out there that you can download to keep track of where your cell phone is to locate it or even erase your data if you have confidential data on it we advise person make sure you secure your device and make sure that we advise person keep it locked do not share your password like a bank account or your ATM you will not share your pin with anyone so we advise person to secure your your card and your pin this is barrel season also. What are tips in terms of persons whose barrels are going home when they're not at home? How do you prevent persons from losing stuff like that also? Well, as you relate to these commuters and who take those persons, they have to arrange specifically because we advise persons. If you're not at home, inform a neighbor that you expect this vehicle or someone to deliver your barrel. Or the person who's delivering will make sure you are there at a certain time and not go when you are not there because we know these criminals they're very smart they come and look around to make sure that no one is at home True. so that we advise person informal neighbor that you're not at home because it's very thing these as you said theft burglaries happen around this time and i advise person they are very expensive but if you could invest in a burger alarm system burger bars or cctv cameras will assist very greatly during this time and in terms of transporting your your barrels to your home, make sure that whoever you're going to hire is somebody who you know because every village they probably have a truck owner, somebody. So make sure it is somebody who you know and who you can be able to identify and not when the person leave um, wherever they collected the barrel that you probably wondering, wait, who did I give my barrel to? So you also have to be careful. You have to know who you're doing business with. Let's talk about neighborhood watches. There's a lot of neighborhood watches in different communities. Mm -hmm. How do you um, incorporate them in your crime prevention activities during this season? Yeah, glad you asked that. And um, I, I'm in incorporate also a neighborhood group for this first time from the Stony Ground section will be partake in this exhibition. A collaborative effort because we can't do it alone, as we say. We need a, the citizens on board. And part of our goals <laughs> in the crime prevention executive is to sensitize the public and crime prevention strategies and partner with communities, government, civil societies, and residents. So everybody is part of this exhibition. It's not our thing is national. It's a national thing. I want to go wider and to reach the farthest point. 
During the interview, Officer Shoy and Lavier demonstrated the correct ways in securing your wallets and handbags during the season. Excuse me one moment, please. I'll advise you not to carry your handbag this way. It is not the safest way to carry your handbag. First of all, ensure that your handbag is closed at all times. You notice, anyone can just pass, remove your phone, remove your money, and we do not want that. So ensure that you secure your bag this way, okay? Secondly, uh, avoid walking with your bag like this. I'll advise you to walk with your handbag like this so that in the event that someone tries to grab your bag, you'll be allowed to, you know? Okay. You understand? Where you normally carry your wallet? Uh, I carry it right back pocket, it does slide on. You know, that's the incorrect way. It's not very safe because a person will easily take it out. What if I carry it right in the front pocket? It advises that you put your wallet in your front pocket at all times, especially when you walk into the street of Kingston. Right. Let me do that now, right? So that is it there? Eh? Yeah, that's very safe. Alright then. Well thanks for the tip yeah. now because somebody could have walked my money and that's it. No problem, man. Right, then, Enjoy man. the season. Thank you. The public is asked to take note of the following announcement. Public assistance for the month of December 2019 will be paid in the following areas on the following dates from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Friday 6th, Trimaca, Chateau Belair, Spring Village, Coles Hill, Rose Bank and Rose Hall. Revenue Office, Tuesday 10th, Barrelly and Cano 1. Thursday 12th, Georgetown. Monday 16th, Beckway, Myro and Union Island. All persons collecting public assistance are asked to walk with their ID cards. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force Band wishes to inform residents of Leyu and Trimaca that the concerts scheduled for Wednesday, December 4, 2019 and Friday, December 6, 2019 respectively has been cancelled due to circumstances beyond their control. Any inconvenience caused is deeply regretted. For more information, please visit our Facebook page at API SVG. Here's where we wrap up this edition of Eye on Government. We hope you found it interesting. Please join us again on Saturday for Inside Story. You can also catch up with the API on our social media platforms. I'm Hala John. Have a blessed evening.